Hey guys, welcome to Kyrus Plays. My name is John, and usually I'm playing a video game, but today we're looking at something a little bit different. However, it's still video game related. Also, there's a video game on screen, so that's something. That's Overwatch, by the way, in case you happen to not know that. Anyway, we are going to talk about stream overlays. Several months ago, I wanted to enhance my stream overlays. I did have Twitch Alerts, which is now known as Streamlabs. I used alerts for follows and whatnot, and it also used event list. However, I had all these ideas to provide more information on screen. But placing them on screen all at the same time was something I didn't want to do. See, I like to let the game shine through, so with the help of HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript, jQuery, I was able to accomplish just that. As you have probably noticed a few times during the video, a blue box appear with a message and then disappear. I have random messages. I have my headline in the top middle for the different places that I can be seen. I even have my event list only appear when I want it to. So after I built this, a friend of mine and fellow streamer showed interest in using it and I said he could. But since he hasn't had the time to update his overlays just yet, I thought about it more and decided to make it available to everyone. This gave me a chance to fix any mistakes and also make it easier to use. When I first wrote it, I wrote it for myself so I didn't worry about how it looked or if it made any sense to anyone else. I had repetitive code for each message box that could pop up, so I've worked on it and made it available publicly, but I wanted to make a tutorial video to help you understand it, how to set it up, and how you could possibly customize it a bit to your style. So the following is probably going to be pretty lengthy, at least while we are talking about the code, because I'm not going to assume everyone already knows HTML, CSS, JavaScript. This is for beginners as well, so I apologize for the length. However, if you have the time, go ahead and stick around. But I'm not going to be so detailed and go over every little thing but I thought that going through the code would also function as a great tutorial that wasn't just small snippets of code one language at a time. I think that seeing something like this would help people that are wanting to learn web development see how the different languages come together to create a neat tool or a website. But I will have links in the description to the different sections of the video. So if you want to skip this code and go straight to the section about setting this up for hosting and with your streaming software, then you can. Of course, the video entirely is just optional. If you already know how you should go about setting it up, all the power to you. The link to GitHub is in the description. So let's get started. First thing, it would be most helpful to understand some HTML, CSS, and maybe some JavaScript. But this is completely optional. I believe that if you watch the rest of the video, I can show you some simple things that will help you do just that. If you really want to learn more though, and you want to get into the fine details of customizing, get into the, the JavaScript and, and make your own custom animations and whatnot, then, then you should learn them. W3Schools is a great place that has tutorials for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Second, you'll need a text editor. You can just use Notepad if you want, but it's not really that useful for editing files other than simple TXT files. Notepad++ is a great one, even Komodo Edit. But the one I use to create this project is called Brackets. Brackets is clean looking, minimalistic, less confusing looking than other editors, and it also has a nice live preview function, which we will go over. All right, let's get to the code. I'm hosting this at GitHub. So if you go there and search for stream pop-ups, it should actually be the first one, but I'm also providing the link in the description. Once you get to the page, notice that there is a readme section. This is where I'm providing a shorter version of this video basically, but it will have links to things that I mention or have already mentioned and uh, can be found there. So find the green button, press that, and then download the zip. Once downloaded, just unzip it and place it where you think might be a nice place to keep. My personal setup is actually in Dropbox, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm placing this unzipped file on the desktop. Let's get into some code. 
If you downloaded a different text editor than brackets, following along from this point will be a little different. The reason for this, when I'll be using brackets, but mainly I'll be using the live preview function of brackets that I mentioned earlier. Live preview basically creates a temporary hosting environment that acts kind of like a mini server for this web project. I use it mainly to test. Komodo Edit may have a feature that is similar to this, but I haven't used it in years. However, if you are using a text editor that you love and you want to stick to, I understand. I have applications that I favor as well. However, you'll still want to be able to test the code, especially after you make any changes. So in that case, skip to the section about hosting in this video, get that set up, and then come back here. It will show you how to set up a more permanent like hosting area for this project. I have timestamp links to the different sections of the video in the description. If you are using brackets, then stay right here. First thing, open the project. Uh, you can either open brackets and then drag and drop the root folder, or you can right click on the folder and click open as brackets project. Notice that it also came with the readme document. It doesn't render in brackets quite well, but it's there. Once open, navigate to example.html. An HTML file is essentially the web page. It's one of the different types of files a browser views to display information to you. You'll see an HTML tag that starts and ends the file. Inside there is a head section and a body section. The head section is used to import other files like styles or scripts, while the body provides the layout ordering of elements. So what you may see is confusing code, but we'll, we'll go over it, don't worry about that. But a browser will use this code to render boxes, text, color, and more. These lines in the head are basically references to other files. The first two are CSS files or cascading style sheets. That provides an organized place to hold code that defines how elements on web pages look. The rest are JS files or JavaScript. This is code that affects the actions of a web page. And the block of code in the script tag also as well, which we will go over later. I'm going to point out right now that Bootstrap, jQuery, and jQuery UI related files don't need to be altered. Those are third-party type extension files that helped me write this. Within the body tag, there will be divs. The div defines a section of an HTML page. By default, a div is nothing more than a simple box. With the help of style sheets, they become more than that though. So this outer div has a class message box that is defined in the stream popups.css file. I styled it so that it would be in a specific spot, uh, be a certain height, uh, the color blue, have white text, and so on. So I've set this up to be runnable right away. So if we click Live Preview, we are going to see what a pop-up would look like. There it is, and you've seen it before uh, in the Overwatch video. Let's leave this browser window open because I'm going to show you how to change the style. Back in example.html, I'm going to highlight the rest of these divs, which are the example message boxes. I'm going to comment those out. What that will do is that will prevent those from rendering to the page because I'm going to mess with the visibility of a message box. So let's open stream popups.css and here we are with message box. We define the width. The background color. Color refers to the text color, but pay attention to display. It's set to none. This is hiding the box so it can't be seen because we only want to show it at specific times. So this is good, but in order to see it while we are styling, let's set it to block. Block is the default setting for a div. When we do this, we will see the box. Now the reason I commented out the other boxes is because the other boxes have the same class style on them. So I didn't want them all to show up at the same time. And actually they would show right on top of each other. That's thanks to the settings position, top and left. That forces the box to show in a very specific spot. Now that you see it, you can play with the settings. You can change colors of the box. By the way, that's called hexadecimal code. In this case, it is a six character string using the letters A through F and the numbers zero through nine. 
that represents colors. But you can type color names too, such as chocolate or still blue. But if you are looking for something specific, again, there are links in the readme file about colors. We can change the width to be something like 800. I don't know why it should be that wide, but if you want to, you can. We can add border radius to add rounded corners. We can change the position with the top and left. Although depending on your animation style, which we'll get into later, changing left could make your box not so favorable. For example, the animation that I chose looks better right up against the edge of the video in my opinion. While we are here in the CSS file, let's look at the rest of it. At the top we have two different ways of including a font. The first one is referencing a font on the web, and the other is a font that you could download and place in the folder structure. For example, I've already included Caviar Dreams. If you want to know where to get fonts from, obviously Google is one, but another one I've used is called Font Squirrel, and there are links in the README file. Body refers to the same tag in HTML files. Anything that you set here will be universal to everything inside of body. For example, the body itself is transparent, and the font, if any text, would be my chroma. But also, everything else would be that way, unless set otherwise. We already looked at message box, but we know that it's not transparent because we have set a background color and more. But we didn't set the font family here, so it's going to inherit from body. I want to point out here that body doesn't have a dot in front while the others do. The difference is one is referring to a real HTML element while the others are rather generic class names. I can apply message box to anything unless we add div to the front. That explicitly sets it to only be used with divs. Message box no BG is almost like message box, but notice how it has no background color. I'm using this one for event list so that there is no box surrounding it. I wanted it to just be floating text. Then header container is what I'm using for being the top center uh, that I'm using for URLs. Uh, there, there is a difference with this one than the others. It has no position fixed, also no top left or right. I'm using margin to center it. Margin refers to how much space uh, you would want around an element, while padding refers to how much space you want around inside of an element. So padding helps uh, for the inside of a box so that it's not right up against the edges of, of a div. So the individual settings refer to up, right, down, left, so clockwise. The autos are on the left and right, so that makes it center. vCenter is another extra class that I added in to help vertically align objects. So let's go back to example.html. So back at our message box, the two divs inside have classes that are defined by Bootstrap. Bootstrap works on a column or grid system. The idea is that you would have 12 columns to fill horizontal space with. So here we have column extra small 2 or call dash xs dash 2 and column extra small 10. Those are the Bootstrap defined class while the one that I've defined is called vCenter. The smaller of the two is where I decided I would have an image. In this case, it's a bootstrap provided icon that looks like a clock, while the bigger div fills the rest of the outer box with a message. A couple of last things, although we have a width on the message box set in streampopups.css, we have our height set here. The reason for this, based on font family, font size, and how much text that you place in the message box, you'll have to adjust the height of each box yourself to make it look its best. Then in some places you'll see these lines. These are commented out because I didn't include real images, but I wanted to show you how they might work in there. You would just undo the comment here and get rid of span glyph icon. Bootstrap's class image response does a good job at sizing the image for the space that it's in.
That was pretty much everything for styling a message box. So let's move on to the JavaScript slash jQuery. So if we go to the top again in the head, we have a script. Inside this is actually code that makes the page function. The first set here is commented. This is basically showing you the different functions that you can use and what the parameters are. A note about comments. Uh, these are two forward slashes. This is how you comment among JavaScript, which is different than commenting among HTML. Moving on to the second section, we are creating an array where we can store different strings. These are the random messages. A note on arrays, arrays have indexes starting with zero. So don't set one before zero and don't skip any other numbers as well. Otherwise you might get an error. The rest are the actual functions that we'll be using and these are just some examples. It comes with one uncommented and the rest of them commented so that when you test it without any changes, you don't get two message box showing up at the same time. In reality, the boxes are in the same position. So one box could actually be over the other one and that could confuse uh, when you expect to see something different. So we are going to go over each function one at a time. And as I explain, I will explain also how you can avoid doing that very thing. We don't want boxes on top of each other. Back to the definitions at the top, uh, let's just go over what each of these mean. So a function's name kind of self explains what it does, while parameters are the inputs or what is passed into the function, comma separated. So loop popup handles looping a single element. The first parameter expects to receive one popup element. This is the box or the div that needs to be passed in. You need a reference to it so that its settings can be changed. So on the actual function, we see the name box one, which refers to this div down here. Surrounded by some stuff though. That is jQuery's syntax for finding an element. We could have used JavaScript's basic way of getting an element, which is document.getElementById and then passing the string box one, but that would be a little more lengthy and you'd have to write more. So prepare for some detail, but the hashtag or pound sign is what denotes that we are getting an element by ID. A dot instead of a pound sign is what gets an element by class name. Uh, and that actually gives us the possibility of, of returning multiple elements because you can set a class name to multiple elements. So if we did dot message box here, it would go grab this div and this div and this div and so on, as long as they aren't commented. It's kind of like CSS as well, because since we didn't put div dot message box, it could get anything with that class name, not just divs. And, and on the other side of things, if we only put div there, it would grab any div regardless of ID or class. So hopefully that explains the syntax a little bit. In our case, we want it to work with only one element and each element should have a different ID. The second parameter is animation style. This changes what animation is going to be used as it shows and hides. I've been mainly using fade or fold, but if you want something different, you could head to jQuery UI's website and see the different animation styles. There is a link in the readme file, of course. Just replace fade or fold, but keep the quotes. Next is animation length. This is the number of seconds that the animation takes to show and hide. Display length is the seconds that the message will stay showing. So in my loop pop-up, I have one and a half seconds for the animation, but it stays on the screen for seven seconds before hiding again. And the last parameter is the word all in quotes. And if we go back up to the top to the definitions of functions, it says on each of these functions below, you can replace the array of minutes with all. This will cause the pop-up to display every minute. So that is how I got it to display right away when we did a live preview. 
Now, if we look at our, our definition of loop pop-up, it says array minutes of hour to display pop-up. Basically, what I'm trying to explain with that terminology is that no matter what hour it is, we're, we're disregarding hour, and we're still looking at the current time, but it looks for the current minute, and it makes a comparison to what you had typed in for your minutes. So if we look at our second function here, we can see that I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and those are in an array, uh, which is denoted by these square brackets. Each value in the array is also comma separated. Those are not part of individual parameters. The start of the bracket and the end of the bracket is one parameter. So if we take all and replace it with brackets and we put in the current minute, and actually I'm going to put in the next minute as well, just in case the time changes. And if we live preview it, we should see it. On the other hand, if we take that out and put a minute that's not current, it should not show. All right, so what I've done is I have uncommented the divs that I had commented earlier, and then I commented out the first line, the first function, and I'm uncommenting them one at a time, and I'm, I'm setting them to all. So this is what the, the loop multiple does. It will show two different boxes uh, in sequential, one, one, one right after the other. So the thing that you have to see here is that it is another array. The first one is box two, and the second one is box three. So it will show this one, and then show this one, and then it's over. Loop random messages will take in the messages object, the array, and uh, using random box, it will display a random message. So if I sit here and reload it several times, it'll display random message one, three, one, one again. So you, you get the idea though. All right, the next one is another example. Loop multiple is not new, but we're doing something different. I wanted to give you an example of how to do URLs in the middle. Uh, down here, URL, URL2, instead of message box, it is HDR container or header container. And uh, I have Twitch in one and YouTube in the other. And when I display that one, even though you can't see it, it is there. So the first one will show and go away. And then the next one will show. So that's, that's if you highlight it. Uh, again, if it's a different color, then it would show up. But on OBS, white uh, with a background of transparent may be seen on your screen, depending on your, your game's color. Okay, so the last example is loop pop-up. Again, nothing new, but we're doing event list. Uh, there's nothing really to be seen because I I just have the example of, of the event list inside an object tag, and then you have your URL to your event list with your number. So uh, just play with that and you'll you'll be golden. Okay, and last but not least, but I have set them all to be uncommented, and if you notice, I've also set them all to be different minutes. And, and this is an example of how you would set yours so that they would not conflict with each other. They would all have their own time that, that they would show up. So for mine, I actually have multiple pages, but I kept up with you know what minute each thing has. So for example, uh, my my event list would show up every 10 minutes, but on the three minute mark. So three, 13, 23, 33, and so on. Okay, so now that we have the HTML and the styles, the CSS out of the way, uh, we can move on to more of the JavaScript. I already covered this stuff that's here, but th this is just calling functions. 
let's go to scripts stream popups.js this is the magic behind the scenes so loop popup these are the lines of code that actually make this work so real quickly i'll explain loop popup these are the inputs and uh, these will be used in a moment so what first happens is we get a new date and what that does is get the current date and the current time together and then the next line this is where it just gets the minute then it compares the minutes uh, to show which is the the array that's coming in and uh, do I have a match with now minute or does it equal the string all and if so we're going to show the element by calling this function up here and what this does is it shows the object you know and it uses this animation then it's going to delay and what that does is it stays on the screen for a certain time then it hides it again so that is how that works so if you want to control and and or change how the functions work uh, change the animations a little bit more this is where you would go and alter to do so okay so now that we're all done looking at code uh, we're going to set up hosting so this is either to set up hosting for testing purposes or a more permanent solution in order to use with OBS because the live preview functionality of brackets or similar editors uh, may not be the best way to uh, serve your website to OBS this tool is called WAMP uh, it stands for Windows Apache MySQL PHP the thing is you don't need PHP or MySQL those are added things and this web project stream pop-ups does not use PHP or MySQL so after a 200 megabyte download roughly uh, once it installs it unpacks and installs it's going to be bigger on your system and it's something that uh, you can just sort of do without another alternative would be to search for IIS Express this is a tool from Microsoft made for web development and it's a it's a small file it's eight and a half megabytes you uh, select your language you download it whatever best matches you and once you download it you want to install it once it installs uh, you'll find the location here C program files IIS Express and then when you run it it's going to bring this up so here it's going to show you that it's a local host and uh, I actually changed it uh, to say stream pop-ups so let's show you how to set that up because the default folder is probably not where you'll want to put your your files so let's close this and uh, we'll want to go to documents IIS Express config application host dot config and when you open that you'll want to scroll down until you see sites here uh, the name was probably localhost and the physical path right here uh, was probably a www folder so when you install IIS Express it'll probably set up a folder for you somewhere in order to get you started however I changed my physical path to go to Dropbox stream pop-ups okay so unfortunately you're going to see picture and picture and picture infinitely uh, but I wanted to show you how to set up OBS and and you can basically follow along the same instructions for XSplit or any other streaming software that uses a browser source so uh, for me overwatch I have a pop-up multiplayer that is actually a an imported source uh, which is here an imported scene uh, so I'm gonna click on pop-up multiplayer and the source is a browser source we're gonna create a, no a new one though and we're gonna call it test so by default you'll see obsproject.com while you're on OBS instead uh, depending on whether you used 
IIS or if you used WAMP, it'll be uh, local host or IIS Express. It would typically be 8080. And uh, for for testing purposes, if you're test if you're setting this up for testing, uh, and you're just putting the folder structure, uh, sh the stream pop-ups folder somewhere, and uh, you kept example.html, then that's what you would type in. Go ahead and size it to the full size, and uh, you can you can mess with FPS. But you don't need any of the CSS. So here, I don't really have an example HTML on my local host, uh, so it's not going to show anything. But that's how you would set it up for OBS. Okay, I think I covered absolutely everything that I could possibly cover. I know it was a lot to digest. I know it was long. And if you watched all of it, then kudos to you. I hope it helped. I, I hope that you uh, have good streams with it. I hope that that helps you a lot. So as I leave you with more Overwatch footage, I did want to mention one last thing. Uh, yes, there is kind of a license on the Stream Pop-Ups project in GitHub. It is GNU General Public License. Uh, really, that means uh, it's open source. Uh, just don't say that it's yours, but hey, do with it whatever you want. I could care less. I do ask you one thing, but this is completely optional. If you use this and somebody takes notice of that and, and asks you, hey, where, how are you doing this? Send them my way. Send them to YouTube. Send them to uh, my Twitch. Uh, send them to this video specifically. Maybe Maybe that will help spread this around because... Because I haven't personally seen a lot of these uh, things pop up overlays, and and as you saw it, it was uh, it, it's the first thing that pops up on GitHub uh, because I put it there, uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, you would think there would be more things like this, but it's the first thing that comes up when you type in stream pop ups as of today, June twentieth, two thousand seventeen. But hopefully, this will spread around and uh, help a lot of people. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys later.